This video is on how to use generic rectangles to help you with distributed property. Now, one strategy is just, uh, first off, you need to know that this is, um, you know, two times this group of terms. And so there's actually kind of like a little hidden or implied multiplication symbol between the two and the parentheses. So one method is to use kind of these just arrows saying, I'm going to multiply two times the X and two times the plus four. Um, it gets a lot more complicated when there's a group of terms here. Um, sorry, I, yeah, group of, well, uh, within parentheses, there's a number of terms and then, you know, times the number of terms over here. So that can get a little bit complicated. Now, some people talk about the spoil method. I don't particularly, I'm not a big fan of it because then you have limitations if there were like three things in one. So we're going to show you this method that will work for anytime you're using distributed property. So how you set it up is, you know, here there's just one um, term. And then within these parentheses, there are, there are two terms inside of this group. And so I'm going to write this as x plus 4. So each kind of um, term in the, in the group gets, gets its own little box. And then what I do is I multiply um, I multiply the 2 times the x, so this is 2 times x, so that's 2x, and then this box is the 2 times the 4, the positive 4, so 8, and then I add all my terms up together, so I get 2x plus 8. And I also check to see if there's any combining of like terms, those are different, so that kind of is my final answer. You can see 2x, 2 times x, 2x, 2 times 4, 8, not that complicated for that type. Um, I mean, obviously this if you're starting, but it, once again, this is a strategy that will kind of help you regardless of the complexity of the problem. So once again, here's one term, so that gets one side, and then this group, each term inside of the group, um, kind of each term within the term, it's kind of my language is not quite right, but um, is going to get its own little box, so 2x, and then over here, plus 5y. And then we're going to multiply the 3x times the 2x, so 3 times 2 is 6, and x times x is x squared. The way that I like to think about it is I do deal with the sign first, then the number, then the variable. So that way I make sure that I don't miss anything. So here I could see positive times a positive, 3 times 5, 15, and then variable x times y is xy. And then I add my terms together, 6x squared plus 15xy. I look to see if there's any combining that can be done. There isn't, so that's my final answer. Now let's look at one when there are two groups of terms. So this is going to get one side, so this is x plus 1, and then over on this, this group is going to get another side, x minus 2, and once again, each box is going to be the product of the two sides, so this is x, and this is times x, so x times x is x squared, this is 1 times x, so that's x. On this side, it's x times negative 2. That's negative 2x. Here's 1 times negative 2, so that's negative 2. And then I write down, so it's the sum of all of this. So 2x, sorry, x squared plus negative 2x, or just minus 2x, plus x minus, you know, plus negative 2 or just negative 2. Looking to see, I see that there are two things that both have x as a variable with a um, with just a exponent of 1, so I can combine those like terms. So I have x squared, negative 2x plus x, sorry, whoopsie, is negative x minus 2. Now, let's look at one that's a 
whole no another level up there. So in this group, I have x squared minus 1. So each kind of term within the group is going to get its own little side. And then here is the other side. And so each one of those is going to get its own little piece, x squared plus 3x plus 4. And so I'm going to multiply each little piece. So this is x squared. And this side here is x squared. So x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. Negative 1 times x squared is negative x squared. Here is x squared times positive 3x. So once again, sine is positive. The number 3 times like the coefficient here would be 1, 3 to the 3. And x squared times x is x to the third power. You can watch a video on exponents if you need a little help with that. Um, and then here, negative 1 times positive 3x. So sine first. Negative times a positive is negative. 1 times 3 is 3 variable. So sine number variable. Here is x squared times 4. So the sine positive times a positive is positive. 1 times 4 is 4. Once again, this little kind of mini coefficient, hidden coefficient of 1. And then the variable is x squared. And then the last one, negative 1 times 4, positive 4, is negative 4. And then you write all of your numbers down, kind of adding back together. So x to the 4th plus 3x cubed plus 4x squared minus x squared minus 3x minus 4. I look and I see do any things have the same uh, variable and exponent. I can see that these two do. Once again, I want to make sure I have that sign in there. So everything's going to be exactly the same, except I'm going to add plus 4x squared minus x squared. So that gives me positive 3x squared minus 3x minus 4. So this is going to be my final answer. Okay, so once again, I really like this generic rectangles method because it, you can see it can work from everything from a very straightforward problem to a much more complex problem that you might not see until, you know, much further down the line in your math education. Okay, good luck with that.